<clears throat> Computer's been fucking really slow, dude. All right. So, we're back. After quite some time here, life gets in the way, get really busy, kids playing football, football season is among us, and that's pretty much why we haven't uploaded in a while. Work, traveling. Mm -hmm. What's up, man? What's going on with you? Nothing much, man. Same old, same old. So. Selections getting interesting, huh? Dude. It's very interesting. A lot, a lot of stuff has happened since the last time we were on. Yeah. I mean. A lot of people turning. I hope so, from man. From the Democrat side to the, you know, supporting the Republican. Yeah. Well, I don't know. RFK. RFK Jr. was an independent. Um, he and, and the reason why he was an independent is because he was ousted by the Democratic Party. Um, and they never really... Um, wanted to really accept him i guess they once he endorsed trump which was crazy the next day they dropped his secret service um service i guess which i thought was really ridiculous um tulsi gabbard was also a democrat for 20 years but she did also change to independent before um she you know but she's not Republican now. Uh, she's even said it herself. She doesn't agree with Trump on a lot of stuff, but she endorsed him, which is good. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of the voters that are going to go. Because Tulsi, I, dude, between the candidates that we've had that are that are women that have ran for president, Hillary Clinton, Tulsi Gabbard, Nikki Haley, um, Kathleen Kamala, um, I would vote for Hillary Clinton in a heartbeat. Hillary Clinton? I mean, sorry. <laughs> Holy shit. Tulsi Gabbard. Um, Tulsi Gabbard, yeah. I was going to say, damn, that's a change. No, fuck no, bro. No, I'm just tired. I'm fucking sore as shit. But, um, yeah, dude, fuck that, bro. I would never, I would never, ever, 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 ever vote for Hillary Clinton. Me either. Her ever. Or, her or Kamala. Mm-mm. They're on the same level. I don't know who's worse. Oh, Hillary think so yeah just because she's has just because i think kamala's more stupid well it's funny how people she's so stupid and not really i mean look where she's at yeah look at her accolade uh, i mean she's yeah. pretty smart as far as her education would say you know well yeah i mean that depends though because i'm talking about when it comes to common sense and well it's very scary because obviously people always say like oh you know we Trump's president, you know, our, our, our rights are under attack. And it's like, bro, you had them for four years. You didn't do anything different. Exactly. Like, if, you know, I'm talking about women in the LGBTQ community. He was president for four years. Nothing changed for you. Nothing at all. So I don't know. That shit's getting ridiculous, dude. But I really do believe this to my core. It's a damn shame, but I really do believe that there's a lot of emotional women out there. I think there's a lot of unhappy cat ladies and. <laughs> that was a joke. Take it easy. But, you know, there's a lot, but, but no, for real, there's a lot and of minorities. There, there's a lot of sloppy, you know, like unhappy ladies that are going to vote for her. And, you know, it's the Trump derangement syndrome is a true thing. You know, there's people who legitimately just want to hate Trump and they don't want to see the good that he's doing. Uh, it was funny how he appeared in over 500 rap songs before that. Um, not by choice, right? People just write lyrics and shit about yeah. him. And he was considered cool as fuck. You know, you see him with all the biggest people. You see him with Michael Jackson. You see him with Whitney Houston. You seen him with Mike Tyson. By the way, promoted Mike Tyson when Snoop. nobody else wanted to Snoop. and defended him. Snoop Dogg. And defended Mike Tyson when everybody's saying that he raped that girl, right? He was the only one that was defending him on Johnny Carson, I believe. Anyway, so the list goes on and on, right? He did the roast with Snoop and everything. Him and Snoop are cool. And it's fucking hilarious how, like, people just hated him when the media told him to. The late and great Mac Miller even wrote that song, Donald Trump. I'll be on my, I, I'm going to take over the world when I'm on my Donald, Donald Trump, Trump shit. Look at all this money. Ain't that some shit? Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Hella people used to do that, bro. And it's just like. When the media, it's so sad, bro. I, um, it, it, but it did prove something very disappointing and depressing in a sense. America hasn't; it doesn't have the backbone that we say it has. No, you know, it, it, it's really showed. And people who like vote that way, obviously, it and doesn't are, have the unity. Yeah, well, that and nationalism. Then, well, that and then the left. The left is always going to be like, well, of course you think that way. You're not Democrat, but nah, bro. It just really showed how spineless. 
I might even I might not even add this might offend, but dickless a lot of the a lot of the people are dude like it's crazy, bro. They, they go over emotions, you know, emotions over everything, emotions over fact, emotions over over stoicism. It's crazy because you hear these re- these really stupid things, bro, like on the news of like, oh, yeah, he's like he was good friends with Putin. And he's a Russian asset. They've called Tulsi Gabbard that as well. And it's just and, you know, they were lying about her going to Russia in 2022 and she didn't even go. But you hear all these things, man, and it's like, do, and I, well, you know, I've already said this, right? So we recycle the fuck out of this, but it's like, have you not realized that you're supposed to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer? Mm-hmm. And it's like, do, do people not know that concept? And I don't think, I, I don't think so. I think that concept has lapsed in a lot of people's minds because they're so used to being safe behind a keyboard. Yeah, I think people. Just know that term for what it is, but they don't really break it down and take it apart, you know, and yeah. apply it to real life or realize, like, how much truth there is to that old term, whether it be cheesy or not or cliche. Well, I don't even think it's cliche, man. I think these phones created an ultimate pussification of the nation. Yep. <laughs> when we have our own fuck, when we get bigger, bro, one day, I know we're not yet, and people probably even laugh, but that's okay, you know, but um, we're going to make some shirts, bro, pussification of the nation. Yep, uh, that that that's a da- that sounds like a fucking franchise, doesn't it? Bro, Sapiens podcast with a little QR code. Yeah. Listen here. Yeah, that's that's fucking hilarious. Hot huh? pacification of the nation. It pretty much has been, dude. It is, dude. It's like dudes are just I don't know, man. And now, obviously, we've talked about this, but it's like, oh, you're toxic. You're toxic. We're not masculine. saying we're fucking Captain America or anything, but I still no. fucking. Try to stand on stand for what I believe in. You know what I mean? The colors from a whole business are red, white, and blue. If anything, we're fucking Captain Frijol. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I still I mean that's the whole reason we're doing this podcast. I feel like Captain Frijol is sometimes. Somewhere we could fucking express what we believe in. Yeah, that's well, that's the thing, man. Once and once that starts going it, away. That's cool. Once that starts going away, man, do we really have a nation? We're gonna have to go on X. Yeah. He all Musk is for the people too, man. Oh, I know, and he endorsed Trump too. Yep. Which is crazy because, like, it's funny how that poor man and people say, poor man, he's a fucking rich. But it's funny how they switched on him. Like, at first he was so, like, uh, the left friends. He was friends of the left like crazy because he was, like, the environmental guy. And he was, you know, making all the environmental cars Tesla, people were buying hella stock in it. And then slowly and slowly, he started noticing, like, bro, this isn't right. Like, <clears throat> what's happening here is not right, and I need to change it. And a man, it, it took the most, one of the most richest men on the planet in order to change that and to preserve freedom of speech and to not allow that craziness to take shape completely into our nation. And it's like a dude's from South Africa, bro. And lose money. It, yeah. And it's like, why did it take a foreigner? He's because he's from South Africa, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if he's of descent or born there. I've never really looked by no South African. Yeah, and it's like, how come it took that dude? I don't know. I, to fucking change everything, bro. Like, let me rephrase that. The last time we were as united, w- w- the last time we were really united was after 9 11. That's about it. Well, but but that's what we and we've recycled that too. That's what it's gonna take, bro. Is an attack on us. In order to be like, yo, we're all in this shit together, bro. Like, we need to band together. I think the tax already here. Well, yeah. Well, the, well, so some people just don't see it or or not. It goes back to that pacification. Yeah, because they they got us against each other. Yep, in a different way too. Yeah. Oh my God, where was I seeing that? I saw. Um, I forgot in what podcast or what thing I saw where um, in the Soviet Union they had secret spies. And there's or they had secret agents that their main job was to go and start shit. Yeah. In the United States. Yeah, I've seen that. To go start Just like, to erupt chaos. you know, racial shit, go start problems to 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 incite violence, dude. Yeah, that's why you see so many bots nowadays. When I mean, you go to the comment section. Oh, yeah, dude, it's crazy. You can tell it's always like the same recycled comment on every other political page, you know. And it's like, oh, that's a bot for sure. Yeah. And who do you think runs those? Oh, for sure. China, Russia. Yep. Venezuela, Cuba. One Maybe. of those communist countries. Yeah. 
I think it's mainly mainly China and Russia, to be honest. But yeah, for I'm sure. sure I'm sure there's subset groups of you know all those other and little different. communist places that do that. But I don't know, man. It's it's real crazy. But on the other side of note, uh, on the other side of things, right? Because politics are getting. Yeah, in my opinion, really like like it's too much. There's not too being much. Crazy, huh? I sound you know I sound like I'm being pussified <laughs> by saying that, but it's just like I just want the election to be here already, man. Same. Like, cause I have a feeling she's gonna win. It's just the numbers are too high, dude, on the minority side and the women, bro. Is just the minority side is what bothers me the most. Well, it's because like China- it's in their worst interest, and people fully believe that. She's for them. It's nah, crazy. Dude. She ain't, bro. She ain't. Have you seen the video, bro, where she's like, you know, I have a lot of power as an attorney in general because I can, uh, the swipe of my oh, pen. Yeah, I've seen that. Bro, it's like, bro, so you love power. So she didn't really care. No, right you're, or wrong. you're enamored with it. Yep. That's the person you want in office? Hell no. Hell no, bro. Yeah, but with great power comes great you responsibility. Need a person with power and reason. Mm hmm. Rationality. Well, well, with great power comes great responsibility, dude. Yep. That's and that and it's funny because you got this shit from Spider Man, but it doesn't it doesn't mean it's not true. It rings completely true in this situation. Always has. You want to when you're in charge of the free of the uh, when you're the leader of the free world, you literally we literally did as much as people don't want to say it, bro. And that a lot of people hey, oh, you fucking Yankees, you know that kind of shit, or you know people say that we think we're all that, bro. But unfortunately, we are all that, bro. Like, whenever we're weak, the planet goes into complete destruction. Whenever we're strong, everybody gets along. Yep. That's and another. You, you, that's another one. You go to other countries too, and you just see the difference too in the in everything. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. And I don't even know why. I don't even know how it got to this, bro. But who knows? Get out there and vote. That's all you can do. Yeah. Vote I'm, and hope. Well, for all you guys, uh, if we, I think we have a couple listeners that are outside of California, but um, yeah, go out there and vote, man. Use your, really use your mind. Really, the, for the first time in a long time, you have a situation where you look, you can look at both presidents. He's, but, but Jay, uh, uh, Kamala didn't wasn't the president. She was the VP. Same shit. Okay. Yep. She, she was in charge of a lot of stuff. So, with that being said, for the first time in a long time, you have a situation where you can look at both resumes. Which one do you want to use? Because if this was a company, if this was a company and you ran it like a company and your job was to hire the best option, nine times out of 10, you would go with Donald John Trump. You yep. just, you would have to. You would have to if you want your business to flourish. But if you're just looking to get some color, if you're just looking to get that DEI higher, then you're going to pick Kathleen Kamala. Yep. Because it has nothing to do with her skin color or anything. Obviously, we're both fucking Mexican. We're, you know, we're brown. But the thing is, is that you cannot fucking hire someone. We, and it's our job as a nation. We the people. It's our job to put them in office, supposedly. They say. Right. It's all up to the electoral. But, um, you know, it's like we cannot let her win, dude. Because it's like she's going to she, you her her policy is very dangerous for middle class America, dude. If she wins, oh, I want I don't know what's gonna happen, dude. I mean, obviously, no one hopes that nothing crazy would happen, but damn, bro, I think people have had enough, dude. I don't think anything crazy will happen. I just think things will stay the same. Little roughly. riots and stuff, but you think riots? I don't. Nothing think so. crazy, just little ones, you know, just like the January sixth type thing. Shit like that. I'm sure around certain cities. I don't think so. I just think. Then again, Republicans don't. Well, we're used to it. Breaking the stores and stuff. Yeah, they don't do that. But for the past 16 years, Democrats have had the power 12 years. So it's pretty normal at this point, to be honest with you. I think you'll see more people leave the country. Not a lot, but they've been leaving. Yeah. And going to other countries and trying other stuff out. Man, I don't know about countries. No, I'd probably think like red states. Yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of people that moved to Mexico, dude. A lot of people that work from home have moved to Mexico. There's been a lot. I mean, tens of thousands have increased in Mexico. Really? The people that work remotely, yeah. You could say it's because of the nice beaches or whatever, but it's mostly because they don't have to deal with none of that bullshit. That shit's hard, though, They'll just bro. pay their taxes back home, and 
That's it. That shit's hard though, bro. Like you have to have money from here. You can't just go to up and go to Mexico and try to make a living from their economy. That's what I'm saying because they work from home. So they work they work for like a US company. They just (laughs) What's weird is like it doesn't matter where they live, they could be anywhere. Yeah. I don't know, bro. I'm kind of crazy with that. I don't like that. No? No. I think it's ridiculous. Why? Well, because you're still paying your taxes. Yeah, but what the fuck you need the United States for, man? You fucking fluctuate that money here. I'm crazy with that, bro. I've always hated it. I can't stand it. I don't give a fuck. I hate when I hate when motherfuckers go over there and fucking they're getting taxes and shit from money here and they're not even circulating the motherfucking money that they're getting from here. Mm-hmm. They're circulating it over there. And I don't give a fuck how much taxes they pay, bro, because a lot of them don't pay that much. And it's like some of them don't even pay that much. If anything, they fucking get a fat ass mm-hmm. refund at the end of the year. And to me, it just doesn't seem right. Yeah. To me, it's like you're here, fucking circulate the money for our economy. Yeah. But no, but I think most of the people who move out there aren't people that are like making, they're not making like, you know, 20 bucks an hour on, on, mm. they're like software engineers. They're like, oh, yeah, they're yeah. big people, like people that mm. are making 200K a year. Yeah. They just don't want to live here. And I've had, I've had that argument a lot with some of my aunts and stuff because they say, that I'm a little radical with that thinking, but it just makes sense, bro. Like to me, it makes sense, but to each his own. Um, I'm not saying my thinking is the right thinking. Quite frankly, anybody can think whatever the fuck they want, mm-hmm. but it's just my opinion. Yeah. And my opinion is not a fact. It's just what I believe. Everybody has their own ethics and morals. And some people don't see it as a big deal. That's all right. I do see it as a big deal, I man. I think the people that you go would just go for, I think they just don't like, I don't know the feeling of being here sometimes. Yeah. Like, as far as fucking, like, the rat race. Yeah. You know, in Mexico, you work your hours, you go home, you chill. Yeah. It's just so fucking... It's something else over there. Yeah. You see, like, I have my dad that does that, you know? But for the most part, like, my dad circulates his money here. Yeah. But you gas know? And he crosses every day. He buys gas here. He doesn't buy Pemex. He, 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 he buys gas here. He fucking tries to buy most of his clothes here because he likes the style over here more. Yeah. And then uh, he eats here sometimes. He buys food here. Um, but he does, you know, buy groceries here and there in Mexico. But he says that it's not what you think, bro. He says it's kind of expensive sometimes. No. It's not It's not what people think. He goes, Especially sometimes. Especially border cities. Yeah. He goes, sometimes I have to buy groceries here. He goes, and then take them over there. Yeah. He goes, but. So that's the thing, bro. It's like they're circulating the money. But, you know, there's people who like. You know, there's people who live in Mexico, bro, like think, 365 think, days out of the year, and then they get fat ass fucking returns with fake socials and shit. Yeah, that, that's straight. That's fucking, fucking scammer. ridiculous, bro. I think I could. I think I could do the both, the dual, dual citizenship. Like live there, dual. I'd say maybe eighty percent of the time in, yeah. in the U.S. and then maybe just or let's just say like, I think I could do December, January in Mexico. When it's super cold here and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking like border city, like on the border. Mexicali, yeah, yeah, yeah. for an example. Yeah. I could live there for two months, but it would have to be like December, January. I think that'd be cool. But I don't know if I could live there 12 months out of the year. No, I'd have I mean, to. I couldn't. You'd have to give me a job that I really like over there, not here. You know what I mean? It yeah, pays yeah. me pretty well. I have a good schedule and I enjoy my life over there. I would die of heart disease within the first five years. Food's too crazy, huh? I wouldn't do anything. No. I don't I don't have motivation over there, dude. And I don't know if it's because it's like vacation, but I literally have no motivation I walk more to do there. squat. I just want to sit there and drink beer yeah. and conversate on the porch. That's true. And and, and I, then I don't know what it's like um for my mom's side of the family because it's all the way across and I don't visit as much as much as I should. I get a lot but, of steps in. But yeah, I don't. I average like I'm not kidding you. I average like nine to twelve thousand steps when I'm there. Doing what? I don't know. Just walking around, going to the store here, go get milk. I'll go. Fuck it. Just I don't know. Just like that freedom of being over there, like just going down to the store. It's like almost fun. Walking uh, four blocks, getting milk, getting that. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's just walk to the taco shop. Fuck. It, let's go at two in the morning. Then you so you go out at night and you just walk around everywhere. Fuck that. I don't do that shit. No. 
No, hell the no. Baseball games, you get a lot of walking in because there's parking's like shit. And you have to be there mm-hmm. waiting. I'm not going to wait in line for two hours of park somewhere. So we I have- don't know what it's like, like over there, bro, but where we at, it's dangerous, bro. At night, it's dangerous. I think, yeah, I think any part's dangerous at night. But I mean, like as far as by the baseball games, no, it's no, not no, too no, bad. No, no. It's fucking dangerous, bro. The Russos are in oh, our yeah, area yeah. like crazy. Well, I've, I've been. And there's. and, and you know, talk about that off mic, but. Um, dude. Nah, bro. I'm going tomorrow. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, shit. Last minute Labor Day fucking move. Yeah, dude. And and, and there's a... It's so hot, dude. There's a lot of shit, bro. Just, I can't even say some of the shit. It's just bad, dude. Like, that's not a place you want to be caught walking at night. And it's like, it, is anything going to happen? Probably not if you're not in the mix, but you don't want to get any crossfire. You don't want to... You, you, you don't just want, don't want to look at somebody sideways. Or you don't want to fit a description. Yeah, bro, because, you, you know, it's, you might, yeah, you might get mistaked for somebody. Like, fuck that. So, dude in the white Air Forces. That could be anybody. You know what I mean? And if you're coming from the U.S., chances are you might be a dude with Air Forces or white Nikes or white shoes. Yeah, fuck that, bro. Hey, dude, what's up, bro? Yeah, no. When the sun goes down, you go down. Mm-hmm. But that's, I don't know. I, I just, for me, everybody's situation is different. Like, I have cousins over there and stuff, and they... Like, they're always posting shit there at the gym and stuff. But they, that's their everyday life, you know? Like, yeah. I can't do that, bro. Like, it's just, I don't have it in me down there, dude. Like, when I'm down there, like, maybe because I'm on vacation mode. But just knowing, like, if I extrapolated that to 365 days rather than, like, three or four, I already know what it's like, bro. Like, my grandma and stuff, they like sitting outside, drinking coffee. My aunts come over and they talk to her and they sit mm. on the porch they do that on a regular basis freshly made food no fucking yeah. fake shit so it'll be my regular basis and that's very difficult see that's what i'm that's what i'm going back to like the people that move over there a lot of them are people that enjoy that that yeah. ambiance of just you know this mm-hmm. it's chill you don't have to worry about here like did you pay the light bill did you pay this gotta go to, oh we have to go to walmart you have to go get this and yeah. fucking this is at seven and this is at six and make sure you get home by eight because you know yeah. I think here you get a lot of that tied in. Life's a lot faster. It could be a California thing too, though. Yeah. Like I said, maybe some other more red states aren't as big as a rat race. Yeah. Except for, I've heard states like Tennessee, which is big when people move to. I heard that one's, that state's a little more chill. I would, I would consider the move if I didn't have children. There's, 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 there's you have to, um, you have to have a very dedicated plan to be in Mexico and like have a future. Oh, yeah. Like, very dedicated. That's why most people don't want to stay there, bro, like, for careers. Because they don't get paid as much, and then the careers are no. not very... Um, there's 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 caps. Like, you're not going to you're not gonna do much. You have to be an entrepreneur. You have or to be a lawyer. Which even, then, which even then is, like, dangerous. The businesses, people make a lot down there. Service-based business, because the way they... Ta- they they're, I mean, they're pretty up on it now, but... I, from my understanding, the way they tax certain things is still a little clandestine, right? When it comes to businesses, yeah, because there's still most everything still cash down there. Oh yeah, that's for sure. I say it's at least I'll say down there it's at least I want to say like seventy percent cash still. Believe it or not, dude, this is gonna sound racist. It's not <laughs> we're gonna be like, oh, that's racist. But honestly, the best business you could probably have down there, if you're good at it, is selling tacos. Yeah, if you're good at it. And we're talking about border city because I'm sure it's different on inner states. I guess that taco thing isn't as big. I'm sure it is, but you know, you know, we grew up going there whole life. Fucking well, I hadn't. You know, my uncle, the one in Vegas, the bald dude, he was a taquero for a minute, and he just and he used to he he was he used to work in Vegas, and he was all set up at Nis- at United Nissan, and he was like some kind of manager or something. So he was all set up. And he said that he would, when he was younger, before he came, before he was like here full time, he used to make uh, tacos de puerco de cachete, mm-hmm. all kinds of shit, bro. He was like known for making like special tacos and shit. So I had all know that. Yeah, like special type of tacos and shit, bro. And he says, bro, back in the day, bro, we're talking <laughs> the eighties. He used to clear like a hundred and eighty to three hundred dollars a day. <laughs> and he said he would. He he goes. He goes. No way. No más trabajaba. Lo que era el, el jueves, el viernes y el sábado, güey. Three days a week. Three days a week. That's it. And they usually work from like, it's usually from like nine till like four in the morning. And, and, and domingo and Sundays he would, he, so he would work uh, Thursdays, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday he would work like short days for the cruda. 
yeah, for the hangover. Like sure. noodle and pozole. Yeah. And well, he wouldn't do that. He would just do tacos, but he made like, yeah, I don't know, bro. He makes these really good tacos. They're like tacos de cachete, like pig, like pork cheek. Mm-hmm. You hear that and you go, ugh. That people nah, doing beef bro. cheek too. Dude, bro, but they're so tender and he. That looks expensive. He, they're so tender and he serves them in this like red sauce. like consu- It looks like consomme, but it's more watery. Almost like a guisado. Sort of, yeah, but I don't know what he makes them with, bro, but they're good. Yeah. And that's how much he was clearing, dude. And it's like, fuck, bro. Like, you can't really deny it at that at that point. Yeah. You kind of have to I do it. the move on those border cities is food for sure. But, yeah, that is the way to go is the food business. And it, if you're making that much money, bro, it's insane, man. But um, Yeah, because with inflation and everything, I'm sure it's like 500 bucks a day right now. So, if you're making 500 bucks a day on the border. Mm-hmm. You're living pretty lavish. Oh, hell yeah. You're not a fucking million or anything, but you're in a... No, you're, but you're comfortable. You're living good, yeah. Yeah, more than comfortable, maybe. But, <clears throat> anyway, excuse me. So, what's up, man? What's up with your... Uh, where are you at with your fitness jersey? Because you're looking... Fitness journey. Jersey? Be, fuck, man. I can't talk today. Because, Think about football, huh? Because you're looking... Yeah. Yeah, for real. Because you're looking, you're looking good, man. You're looking schnazzy. Bro, I haven't lifted. What? I've been on and off for the past two months. Well, you're looking good. I've been lifting. I mean, I'll, I'll try to get at the very least two days in, but yeah. But I uh, mean, but prior, you know, I was I was all pretty much on for the last eight months. But like the last two months, I've been on and off, to be honest. And then my diet's been on and off. Like I think it's fine because some days I'll probably go as far as eating four thousand calories. Yeah. But then the next day, with carbs and everything, everything. Oh, but, okay. But then the next day, I might eat twelve hundred. So you're just carb cycling essentially, and, and, I just, and I'm not even trying to. It just happens. It's like, just happening. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like, fuck, I ate so much last night. And then the next day, I'll just catch myself like working, and it's like 2 p.m. rolls around. And I'm like, I'm still not even hungry because I, I think just because of the, yeah, the yeah. carryover for so much calories. So I think it evens out. So if you think about it, oh, you might even be losing weight like that. Say that's like 2,500 calories. That was popular for a long time. Say the zigzag uh, diet. Yeah, that a lot of people. A lot of people still do that. So say if I ate 4k. Mm-hmm. This is, these are estimates. I always try to overshoot 4K one day and the next day 1,200. Yeah. What's that? 5,200 divided by two days, 2,600 calories a day. Yeah, average. So at 20, I mean, at two, I weigh like 245 right now. That's probably my maintenance anyways. Yeah. You know? And if I get some steps, and like you said, I might be right there. That's impressive, dude, that you've been able to keep the weight off because that's difficult to I mean, do. I put on. 20 pounds though in the last. Oh, for sure. In but, the la- but in the last. Seven months, but compared to how you used to be, bro. Oh yeah. So you, I would say that you've been really successful because you've managed. You haven't got let yourself go bad. Yeah, for my for my biggest, I mean, I'm even right now, which I feel heavy, which I'm still fucking like nine, almost ninety pounds under. For my Fuck, heaviest. bro, that's crazy. You know, I don't think people understand how fucking crazy that is. That's that's the difference between no metabolic Zampic, syndrome, no Zampic, nothing. Yeah, hell yeah, that's the way you should do it. But th- that is ninety pounds, dude. Is the difference between metabolic syndrome and fucking, you know, it's like, yeah. just being better, just just being better, and for longevity purposes. Like yeah, my heavy cell was three thirty one, and I'm six. Like, I'm floating around two forty five. Just say so I have to get an average. So that's like what? It's like eighty six, eighty five pounds. Close yeah. to ninety, mm-hmm. but like, but yeah, I think I've just I've been able to somewhat manage. Like, my body seems to like to stay right around this way in the forties, from two forty one to two fifty. Some days, because like I said, you know, you know how it is with the water. It can manipulate oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could drink. Say, say like the last two weekends ago, we have some fucking beers or whatever. Even if it's low carb drinks, you no know, alcohol still going to blow you regardless. Oh, hell yeah. And you could be up 12 pounds and literally the next day for a big person, someone small might be like, how do you hold on to 12 pounds in one day? Yeah, it's fast. It's like, yeah, dude, you're like 5'7", 120, so you wouldn't know. Yeah. No. But when you're in the 240s or above and you're like, at least I'll say like 5'10 or taller, you know that water can fucking yeah, it adds make up. or break you, you know? Yeah. So to say. <clears throat> yeah, it adds up. I... I stopped stepping on the scale. I was like, I'm just going to look at myself. Yeah. The love handles are smaller. Perfect. I've been doing, I've, I mean, on this last cut I did, I mean, I was on the scale like once or twice a week, but lately this year I've been on, off the scale less. I'm like, I'm just more worried about like 
how are my shoulders looking? How's uh, my, yeah, how, yeah. You know, how's my midsection looking? How's the back of my midsection looking? You know, yeah. how are my legs looking? You know, the same thing you're doing. Yeah. Like, just versus how I feel and how you feel as well. You know, what ojo? Sometimes you get so focused on that damn scale, which is all, it's also a good marker and metric, you know, to see if you're doing stuff right. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes you get so obsessed with it, it fucks with your head. Yeah, it does. Because you're not taking into account water, it stress. Feels, it fuels the body dysmorphia. You know, stress, sleep, everything can manipulate that scale. Where was I going for this? Lost my train of thought. But, uh, oh, I feel like, and then sometimes if it really fucks you up, it could, it could motivate you so far to where it fucks you up. And what I mean by that is you'll catch yourself so motivated to like, I only lost a, a half a pound this month. I mean, this week. Next week, I'm going to cut 300 calories off and fucking add two extra days of cardio. Now you feel like shit. Yeah. Now your fucking metabolism's wrecked. You know what I mean? So I feel that's why I think the scale for sure should be a metric of your cutting. Oh, absolutely. But I think it should definitely. Because it helps you adjust your calories. It should definitely not be your main no. focus. Mm-mm. Unless. No, not even. At some point, I'm going to have to step on it, bro, because I'm just so big dude like heavy on the scale even even when people go oh wow you really look so great you lost weight <laughs> it doesn't matter dude like even then like well like, to get a metric though if people were telling you, you look good that means you're well yeah but the it thing means your is, body's uh what's it doing it's doing the uh recomping yeah but the, the interesting thing is like what's crazy is that in high school i wasn't fat yeah, you know, I thought I was heavy. High school, I was looking at pictures in the yearbook, and I was like, bro, I wasn't fat at all. Mm-hmm. At all. And we were thinking I was fat. And I was not at all. And I was like, yo, that's crazy, man. No love handles whatsoever. Uh, and then I was already 255, bro. I don't know, man. I just carry a lot of fucking weight. Yeah. Always. Ever since I was a kid. I don't, I don't, when you're also built wider, too, than I, I know. person, you know? That shit's frustrating. So you have more surface area to hold weight. I know. That shit's frustrating, bro. I just... I don't... Dude, the last time I was... Fuck, man. I don't know. I don't even... The thing is, is I don't really want to be, like, small, bro. Like, like 170? No, you dude. I'll mean? be dead, bro. Because there, there's some people, like like you're saying, that, we're, that we're, we're built big. Like, regardless if we got really light and everything... We'd still be be heavy. Yeah. Like Big Boy from Shade Cartel talks about it. He talks about how he wrestled. I think, I don't know the exact metrics, but I think he wrestled like his freshman year before his major growth sprint. I think he wrestled like at 160s. Believe it or not, the guy was 160. And then he said he went to like the next year to like 185s. Yeah. And then the next year he was in the 190s. Yeah. And then he said it left his senior year in the two like heavyweights. He was like 215, 220. And that's someone that was played all sports as well you know like super active because if you look at his frame too though he's yeah, just he's a wide, wide guy wide shoulders because like him when he gets down what he with that crazy k he did to like 250 he was fucking jacked yeah he, he was. was like probably he was probably 14 percent body fat huh around roughly not too yeah crazy. maybe 18 18 20 yeah i'd say yeah i'd say 13 8 13 to 18 it looked good on him because he had abs at least four of them you know <laughs> yeah he and did people are like what are you like 220 whatever and that fool was still like 260 i know that's crazy and he's like nah he's like i'm just fucking that's how that's how he's built yeah when i was um i also saw pictures it's funny man like i have body dysmorphia i'm very open about that i've always had it always i don't see myself as a big guy i see myself as a fat guy it's just what oh, I see okay. myself as. But it's funny, bro. Like, people will make comments and they'll be like, God damn, bro. This this, this, this is crazy, man. This, this is like awareness, right? This is because, you know, we're huge advocates on this podcast and this platform yeah. for men's mental health. And that's something that doesn't get, you know, attention because it's like, pff, you're worried about the gym. What an idiot. What a moron. But it's like, dude, this is how psychotic and we're going to get into it right now because I felt like I had a psychosis moment last night, um, which bordering on paranormal. But um, this is how crazy it is. People will make comments and they'll go, oh, look at look at your triceps. Look at your fuck. Look at the size of your arms, bro. That's where I feel like it's a huge issue, dude. When I look at myself, 
I don't see that, bro. I see small, like, I see, sm- yeah. I, I, I see like spaghetti arm biceps. <clears throat> I don't see the tricep. Yeah. I'm like, look at my, look at this, man. Like, I will literally start freaking out, dude. I mean, look at my, look at my biceps, dude. They're so tiny. They look like my son's. And I just, I'll freak out, dude. Dude, don't even get me started. I won't roll up the sleeves on my sweater. Because I'll freak. Why? I'm like, look at the fucking size of my fucking forearms. They're tiny. Forearms are hard to grow, honestly. Oh, dude. I've been trying, dude. I've been trying. I, I, I never used to work out my forearms. But back some, I was like, oh, yeah, you'll you'll get some. If you don't wear, if you don't wear, um, fuck, what are those called? Wraps. Mm-hmm. If you don't wear wraps to lock them in. Your forearms take over a lot. So yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. My, my forearms are getting work. Hell no, dude. If you want to see me freak and fucking act all shady and nervous, if I'm wearing a sweater and I roll up my sleeves, oh, dude, it's game over. I'm fucking freaking out. Whether or not people ask, like, what's the matter? I'm freaking out, dude. My, I feel like they're like pencils. No. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's that bad. It's that fucking bad, bro. And I've always been that way. If I roll up my sleeves, I don't realize. You know, we all roll up our sleeves like, you know, oh, here, come come pick this up or come look at this. You roll up your sleeves. And then if I catch a glimpse of myself in a mirror, I say, what the fuck are you doing? Roll down your sleeves, you fucking moron. And I'll roll them down, dude. It's that bad, dude. I'll take off my sweater. I think that happens to anyone that's been a little bigger and lost weight, though. That happens to me sometimes. So like, Even when you said earlier, like, damn, you when you were like, uh, you're looking good. What are you doing? That's why I was like, kind of like, fuck, I haven't been lifting correctly. Yeah. As someone at Walmart tell me the same thing. They were, bro, so what you been doing? I'm like, bro, to be honest with you, I haven't been lifting correctly in two months. What's that? Where's the, when's that picture from when you did the T-pose on the, on the Instagram story? At, uh, May. Okay. End of May. That was at Mammoth. Yeah, because you, you look, you look jacked in that picture. Yeah. And see, that was just strictly, and people don't believe me, that was... Just strictly push ups and pull ups. Strictly push ups. That's it. Yeah. But yeah, dude, I've been trying really hard to grow my forearms. They're such a bitch to grow. Mm-hmm. I just grab, I go on the cables and I put the straight bar oh, on for it. Me too. I feel like they've always been a hard part. Especially Very when difficult. They're so fucking long on me. Very <laughs> difficult, dude. I grab the straight bar, put it down, and then I just go like this. I go. That's why I, I always try that. to, when I get back into it, that's why I always try to make sure to do a lot of fucking close grip uh, overhand pull ups. Because I know it's mostly the fucking forearm. Oh, yeah. I think it's because your forearm gets so much uh, work throughout the day that it just doesn't grow up. It activates, yeah. You know? Just it's just used to it. Used to it. It's like your calves. It's just yeah. used to it. You got to shock the shit out of it. Yeah. So, I always grab that the straight bar. What's the what's the, the single handle for the cables? The ones that you use to... Uh, like that? The little fly things? Yeah. I'll grab the fly things and I'll pull them down. And I'll really activate them and I'll go... Mm-hmm. Like that. And because I want to get vascular right here. And it's interesting, like, you can see my veins are starting to pop through. So now they just need to burn through that. Yeah. That layer of fat. But, dude, I... I and, and that also can be food. Everything's all... I have some oh, days where I'm yeah. Like, like, I can't really see my veins. And there'll be other days where I'm just, like, fucking in line. You have a little coating of, of, of water weight, yeah. Yeah, well, there are other days where I'm just, like, line... I'm in line at Walmart randomly or something. I look down at my receipt and I see my veins and they're just, like, fucking... A road map. Oh no, I don't. I don't on? get. I don't get them up. I'll be like, "What's going on right now?" Like, this is yeah. just literally a normal day. You know? I wish I could. And it's either up. because I'm fasted or I had a lot of salt. Or I don't know what it is. Like, Even when I'm fasted, bro. No. Mm-mm. I just get veins in my like from. Even the leaner you get, you will. From my wrist down, that's it. That's where that's where my veins are. But I don't get crazy ones either. I get. I only get like this. This one that comes like down through my bicep to here, and it'll cross, and it looks pretty cool. Yeah, so, it's rare though. But I that's when I get to like two fifteen. It, it, it's like yeah. it'll always be visible. Who knows, even if I get smaller, because I was planning on just cutting, because Rose, I made a pro. I don't know if I talked about it. Um, it was sad, bro. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it can't feel too bad, because I didn't feel bad when I was eating like a porker. But she was like, Dad, she's like, are we going to Halloween Horror Nights again? I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. Times are tough. I kind of, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. She's like, what if I save up money or help t- you? Are those tickets for sale already yet or no? Yeah. Oh, they are? Yeah. Uh, she's like, what if I save money to help you? Because we, I took her. 
last year or the year before it blew her mind dude i still never gone dude I've it's been, the coolest I've thing been telling you i'm on the to go with you i never go dude let's go man we're gonna go in the end of the, end of september i think because it's cheaper oh it's that soon yeah they do it that soon yeah and they, well some, because we always go in october for some reason be- i thought it was only uh, for some reason i always thought it was the month of october oh no they do september october and the and, and the beginning of november it's cheaper yeah but but we always go in the beginning of October to set the tone for October. Yeah. But this time I was like, you know what? Let me just do that because... So we buy expensive tickets. It was Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. And we buy we buy the Universal Express. You have to. Exactly. Because you have to. It is pricey. So for both Don't of go. us... Honest, that's what I tell people. I've been to Universal a few times. And honestly... If you really want to have enjoy, I've never been horror nights, but yeah, as far as express thing goes, if you don't get it, bro, it sucks. Mejor no vayas. Yeah, don't it go. It sounds fucked up, but that might sound like oh, well, it must or whatever. You might don't go, bro. Honestly, like no, I'm sucks. saying, that out of a good place, like save up the extra week you need, whatever maybe, or sacrifice that is extra, like what is it, like eighty bucks, or fifty bucks sometimes. Yeah, and trust me, it'll make the world of it. Oh I mean, no, no, it's a- your experience will be. You have enough time to eat, get more drinks. It, no, it's a massive difference. The, We're the, talking the, hours. We're talking but, the difference of six rides, literally. Oh yeah, and not just that though, dude. Like, if you go on a general admission, it's a it's eighty two hundred dollars, something like that in September. It, 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 yeah, for and, horror nights. Yeah, general admission. Okay, it's somewhere between sixty nine and a hundred. For general admission. For general admission. And then, and then you have the Horror Night ticket on top of that. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a separate ticketed event. Yeah. So so let's say it's 70 bucks to get in. Yeah. And then the Horror Night. Roughly. Is, and what's the Horror Night's ticket? It's separate. Yeah. So what's that one, though? Eh, on about average. that. So if you get general admission, it's like somewhere between 70 and 100, depending on the day. Weekends are more expensive. But Halloween Horror Nights is only Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you pay general admission and you pay a separate. No, fee. no, no, no. You just pay the ticket. If you want to go to Universal Studios during the day, that's on you. But if you just want to go to Halloween Horror Nights, it's one ticket. You don't have to buy. Okay. You don't have to you buy a Universal to... ticket and a Horror Night okay. ticket. No, it's, I feel like we talked about this before, and I always get lost. Well, well yeah, because you haven't been. It's okay, confusing. So, it's confusing. So pretty much, you're saying at a certain, as at a certain time of the day, it, the whole park turns into Horror. They Nights. They start kicking people out of the park. Um, at four thirty, they tell everybody to get so out. If I show up at seven p.m. to Hall- to Universal Studios, it's just one. It's fee. it's Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but so me and me and Daniel, my brother, mm-hmm. my little brother, we did that because we were being cheapskates, and we actually had the money to do Universal Express at that time. And he's like, "Stop, we got it, bro. It's too expensive. Fuck that." Because between both of us, it's a hundred and forty-four dollars. Let's just do that. We did that. We didn't get on all the... Because uh, all the rides are open. Super Mario World's open. Everything's open at night. That's pretty cool. That's a lot better. Dude, we didn't get on anything. We got on... We got on... We went into The Exorcist. We went to the Insidious, the Red Door. Uh, we went to American Horror Story. And then we got on the Mummy Ride... We got on the Jurassic Park ride. That's it. And oh, and we got in Freddy versus Jason, but that shit took us two hours and forty five minutes. Damn. And Daniel cool. had to take a piss. Oh, I remember you telling me that shit was the fucking and most annoyingest thing ever, dude. But it's like, and then with when you do, I've always done the Universal Express passes. That is the only time I've never done it. It was never, never again, dude. Never again. I'd it rather ruins the whole experience, huh? It does, dude. And when you have the express passes, the most you're gonna wait is ten minutes. Yeah, I was gonna say one time I waited like fifteen minutes max. That's max, nothing. They, yeah, it's kind of fucked up, dude. Like those, it's way better than Disney because in Disney the express passes work a little different. In Disney, you have to like reserve your time. That's so stupid. Huh? Yeah, you. If you have an express pass, you can't just show up. Like you have to ex- like reserve your time. Yeah. So, like, if you have an express pass, you have to, like, okay, I'm going to use my express pass for Pirates of the Caribbean at 10, to between the windows between 10 and 11. And then I'm going to use my express pass for the Haunted Mansion between 11 and 12. You have to plan it out. 
I'm going to use my express pass for Space Mountain between one and two. It's annoying, dude. And and if you don't, you're fucked. You don't get to no, use it again on that. You're screwed. Yeah, you're screwed. If you miss your time. Disney's fucking expensive. It is, dude. I've always said this is a joke, but it's true. It's hard to believe in magic at those prices. But Universal Studios, a whole Halloween Horror Nights is dope, dude. And as she was telling me, anyways, this is how ADD works, guys. If you guys want a general understanding of how it works, I opened the cabinet at the beginning of the conversation about weight and how I, I'm fulfilling a promise for Rose. And then I moved into another cabinet and then another one and then another cabinet and then another one. So now I got to shut all these cabinets and go back to the original one. That's how ADD works. <laughs> so anyway, she tells me, you know, dad, are you going to Halloween Horror Nights? I was like, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Times are tough. But what if I help you? What if I help you? I was like, hi, oh, Rose, I don't. I don't want you to do that. And she was like, no, I, 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 I want to. All right, fuck it. I'll let you help me. You pay your half or whatever, whatever you can help with. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? If I if I make enough, let's just go. I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll just use the I'll just use a firm, you know, like a firm is an app where you can like pay yeah. buy now, pay later. I did that with my flights for Scottsdale. Yeah. And you can and you can do six months, 12 months, 18 months. It's pretty convenient. It's very it convenient. Builds your credit. Yeah. Super dope. Just make sure you have those like $48 in there, whatever it may be. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Just do auto pay That's to reduce the interest. And they gave you a little email three days before. It's pretty nice. It's really nice. Just in have, case you have to transfer something. A firm has saved my life, dude. Yeah. I, I, Mine's one of, I use one of those things, but yeah. Yeah. There's Sezzle. There's Klarna. There's a firm. There's pay, PayPal paying for. But, it, you know, so that's what I'm going to do. So we're going. But she goes, the last time I went with her, I was on the heavier side. Mm-hmm. I was in, I was uh, north of 310. <laughs> so I was pretty fucking heavy. I think I was 329 or 335 or some shit. 335 for sure, bloated with water. And the pizza. Ugh. And uh, yeah, bro, I got escorted. Not escorted because I didn't get kicked out, but. You know, I got walked out from fucking Harry Potter's Wizarding oh, World. the best fucking ride, bro. Uh, the Wizarding World. And something that had never happened to me, bro. My uh, The mummy ride. The guy was trying super hard to get it to close on me. That one's pretty fun, too. That one's fun, too, bro. But that never happened, bro. I was like, wow, dude. I let myself go. Bad. I'm in so, six years. So, I was like, you know what, dude? Yeah. And then she was like, Dad, can you, like, can you, like, lose some weight? I really want you to be on the rides with me. I don't want you to struggle like last time. Bro, when your kids say something like that, bro, it's shit different. guts you, bro. It guts you, bro. Cuz I've always been I've always been I haven't been able to to get back to my body that was shortly after high school. And I'm sure that happens a lot to a lot of guys, dude. It happens a lot it's to common. a lot of women. It's very common. Yeah, you get fucking complacent, you get But it's been 6 weeks since that, bro. I've been hella fucking Tailored to my cut, bro. I don't fucking, I don't stray when away. Gonna, when are you going to weigh yourself on the first? Nah, I'm not going to weigh myself. I, I plan on going pretty hard on when I get back on maybe, maybe Monday. Because I'm, I'm going to drive back on Monday, which is Labor Day. But I'm going to weigh myself November 1st. November? Yeah. Because I'm not going to cut. I'm going to, I'm not, I, this, this is, this is my wish. And this is my presumptive plan i don't know if it's gonna go down that way but we'll see but you already know your way you weigh less than when you went last time oh m- most definitely for sure but this is my presumptive plan let's see if it happens my goal from here on out i made a promise to my wife and when i became 30 years old i said i waste i didn't waste it but my 20s i fucked around a lot a lot i ate a lot I, I drank a lot. I stayed up late a lot. And I told her our 20s were crazy. And I said, my 30s are going to be my swollies. I'm 31 right now. And I just turned 31. And by the t- when I hit 30, yeah, last year, yeah, last year, not this year, because I just hit 31. I took it serious, dude. I had a crazy mm-hmm. heart scare. Remember, you know, and it was like, okay, now that solidified it. So from then, when I was thirty last year to thirty one, it's been a year. I did lose weight because Feel better, huh? Yeah, because I did lose weight because I was three thirty seven. My heaviest I've ever been was three fifty seven, but I was three thirty seven, and from here on out, I don't know what I weigh, but I know it's somewhere 
But you feel a lot better, too. The low 300s you are You can see it, too, because like that shirt I gave you right there fits a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And um, this is my presumptive plan. It's the third time saying it. I promise I will finish the sentence. But this is my plan. I'm done cutting November 1st. Mm-hmm. That's it. That would be, I'm at six weeks now, so how many weeks until then? Well, you have September, October, November, so about 12 weeks. Fuck, that's still a long weeks. That's still a long time. Oh, no, we're about the end of the month. 13 weeks. That's a long fucking time to yeah. cut. If you could leave, well, if you could even lose, say, a pound, if you could average a pound a week, that's 13 pounds. It's a lot. You know, obviously, you're going to have weeks that are better. Yeah, and that's crazy. But that's my plan. So, we'll see. Um, if you could average two pounds a month in mean, a week, I'm sure I have. That's twenty six. I'm sure I have in a week, a couple, a week or so. That's twenty six. Yeah, I'll probably have like what a do you couple. Think, what do you think you'll be if you lost twenty six pounds? What would you estimate? Weight wise? Yeah. On the scale? Yeah, like two seventy five. No, I'm. I, I can't tell you, bro. I can't lose weight like that. Two eighty nine. I mean, what do you think you weigh right now, though? Right now, if I'm being completely honest, I don't know, because. I feel really small right now. Like, I look at myself, and I feel really small. Like, so much so that it's fucking with me. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm getting tiny. Like, I'm losing size, and I don't want to look like that. I'm going to look like a, I'm gonna look like flats from SpongeBob. And I don't want to look like that. And I'm just like, I don't no, know. I think it's just a mental thing. I've dealt with that, too. But then you just have to, you, 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 you become, you get a new, new norm, and it's weird. And then, and then when, when you get to, like, let's say when you eventually get to 275. Yeah. You're going to get used to it. And then if you want another jersey, another journey to get to 260, you're going to feel the same thing you felt right now at 260. It's fucking weird. It keeps happening. It keeps, it's always happened to me too. The same thing. I genuinely don't know. But if I had to take a guess, because I take creatine, I would say 303, 304. That's what I, I said. 30, I'll tell us guessing 301. That's why I said if he loses 26 pounds, he'll be 275 and buy him yeah. first. If I stop taking creatine by the time I dewater and everything... And lose some water weight because obviously you lose water weight, right? Um, I would say, if I wasn't on creatine, ninety five, eh, maybe like two ninety eight, somewhere around there, maybe. But the thing is, is like, this is the first time I've done this, but I'm gonna take creatine all year. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people use it for weight loss. Just five Believe grams. Not. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I, I we talked about that, but the thing is, I don't want to lose muscle. Yeah, I want to try to salvage as much muscle as I can. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on. I'll, I'll, I'll probably be on the same path with you, honestly. Yeah, honestly, because because I, I turned thirty in six months. Fuck. And like I told you before in the spot, because like thirty, I want to be. I want my thirty to look better than when I was nineteen. When I when I got down to like one ninety five or whatever. But obviously, I'm not gonna get down to one ninety five. But I want to. Yeah. I want to go on a, a small cut too. Uh, like a serious one again. I guess I'll start Monday or Tuesday, which is September second. This is I start September third because I'm probably gonna be hella bloated for Mexico. Yeah, well, that's normal. You know, say September third, so I'll do all of September and October as well. Yeah, and November. So that was so no, my yeah. so my plan is to like after November first, I'm done cutting, but I'm not gonna bulk. I'm gonna go into that recomposition period. Well, I got the same plan as you. But a more controlled recomp. I'm not going to be like, ah, I'm not cutting anymore. Yeah. Sure. I didn't bring lunch today. Let's go to Taco Bell. I didn't bring lunch today. Let's go to Pizza Republic. I didn't bring lunch today. Let's go to Carl's Jr. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. If, if if I need lunch, yeah. I'm going to go get baked chicken thighs at Vaughn's. Yeah. Or, or something needs to help me was a... Uh, happens. You know, sometimes you get up too late. You didn't prepare the night before. I used to just keep a tub of protein in my car. In case. Yeah. I'd be like, fuck it. It is what it is. Two fucking scoops. Need more though. Yeah. Obviously, it's not the best tasting thing all the time, but. Yeah. I mean, I just don't want to. My thing is, bro, like, I lose weight and gain weight really fast. And I attribute that to my metabolism still being on fire. I don't want to slow it down like that, bro. Yeah. The more you don't eat, the more you go to protein shakes as the source of your main nutrients, you will make your metabolism crawl yeah it'll make it'll make it'll find a new it'll make a new uh norm so to speak you know yeah it, like say you go down at 1700 calories and you're 
it'll just make your body run off of seventeen hundred calories. Yeah, does that make sense? Like instead it does. of you know, that's that's what that's what you got to be careful for. Like mm-hmm. a lot of times with um with that shit, like a lot of people say, "Well, I just won't eat and I'll lose weight." Bro, what you're doing is if you're in crazy amounts of caloric deficit, I've met people, bro, and I've talked to them, and they are like in a in, in such a high caloric, they're like eight hundred to a thousand calories in caloric deficit. And what they're doing is is just is, in diet, just in diet, Not even including physical activity. Oh no, with physical activity. So they'll have, and I know because I'm, you know, some people ask me like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" I'm like, "Bro, you have to track. Yeah, you just have to to get a better to get a better picture of your macros to see where you're at." Yeah, because if you're a thousand under on your on your diet, and then you still work out, yeah, and say you did. Some people take it extreme too. They'll go. They'll go on the treadmill for an hour. You just lost. You're like fucking fifteen hundred under, fifteen eighteen hundred, depending on how much you weigh. And then when you're resting, if you're sore, your body burns calories as well. You're, yeah, you're neat. Yeah. So, dude, like, I'm not joking, bro. <laughs> so you're fucking two k under. Oh yeah. No, I know some people like that. So you're gonna be catabolic in all senses: water, muscle, fat, and muscle is easier. Body likes to eat that quicker than fat. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. That's why keto is so effective to lose fat. But you do that enough. And what happens is you put your body in starvation mode quite a Mm -hmm. bit. And then you slow your metabolism down. Yeah, figures it out. And then people who are on the heavier side are like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong. I'm doing all the right shit. First of all, you're not even eating. Exactly. It's like, I'm doing all the right shit, and they still look the same, and they're still kind of fat, and they lose a little bit of weight, but then they hit a plateau. They're like, I'm doing everything right. It's like in that weird bill, too, where it's like their stomach shrinks, but it keeps the exact same form. Yes. And then their arms don't lose weight. They get flabby. Yes. They get like lanky looking like Bobby Hill. Yes. I fucking tell people that, bro, because there's a couple people that are asking me for help, and I tell them, bro, this is not the way, bro. You have to eat. I tell people this. Can I just do protein? No. You cannot just live off of protein shakes. Yeah, well, I just mean 800 calories in my head. I'm like, dude, you're fucking smoked. Bro. For one one meal? Like in my head, they're like, that's their whole day, bro. You know what I tell tell people who ask? Oh, oh, yeah, I was just thinking about eating kale salad and a piece of salmon for, for a day and then two protein shakes. Yeah, I've heard that one. People are like, oh, in the morning, I just have like... Some frozen fruit, two scoops of protein, and then I go work out. They do all this crazy stuff, and then before the end of the night, my dinner would just be eight ounces of chicken breast and some broccoli and some cheese. I'm like, bro, that's like 1,100 calories, if that. I mean, your protein is somewhat high, but bro. Nah, bro. That, the, the, thing, the thing is this. That, 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 I feel like the only time you could actually use that, let's say you have a wedding and you have to fit into a suit and the wedding is... Yeah. Let's say maybe up to four weeks. But for four weeks, you're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do that shit for long term and then, then be prepared to have those four weeks when you go fucking have those mimosas on wedding day, you're going to put on like fucking 10 pounds of the 30 you lost. It'll, it works short term. I'll give you that. It's like how people make weight for certain things. But the point. yeah. But it's short lived. Yeah, it's short lived. That's what you need to understand. A lot of people. And yeah, I've heard people say the same thing. It's fucking it's insane. Well, the crazy thing is, is this. Can you do this for the next 10 years? No, no you can't. You can't. It's impossible. You're looking for sustainability. You're looking for... Diets crash. Like when people say, when you die, I'm like, yes, it's a hard one to wrap your head around, but you're, you're making a lifestyle change, not a diet. And people are like, oh, I'm not... They, then they get all freaked out when you start saying that word because it's like, like you're saying, it has to be something that you could follow. Or like people will ask you for help. They'll ask you for help and they'll be like, yeah, bro, but you got to change the way you do things. No, 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 just tell me how. And it's like, okay. But if somebody tells you, like, it's different. If somebody says, I want to change my life, I want to do this every day, that's different. But then, like, people, oh, this is, oh, I, this I just wish someone would tell me exactly what to work out and how to eat. And, da, 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 da. and it's like, yeah. you already know those people. It sounds fucked up most of the time. Those people are going to fail within, like, the first month. It's oh, fucked up. Yeah. But those people can literally follow what you tell them to do. Yeah, yeah, and they'll make crazy, actually, like actual changes in like three weeks, and then they'll just stop. But it's because they didn't, they took everything for face value. They didn't like actually implement the rest of the things throughout. You know, after yeah. that, like you have to make changes, bro. Changes, like 
when you go fucking sit and the waiter's like, can I get you guys drinks? Get the water, dude. On top, turn, turn the mic towards you. On, on top, on top of it being free, you know, take the water. Yeah. And if you really have to have some sweet or whatever, put some, dude, I do this all the time. Shout out Chris Jones. Fucking <laughs> that guy's been jacked for, consistently, for, you know. I forgot about that guy. He says, just get get the water. Get some get to have them bring you a thing of lemons. Squeeze like six lemons in that fucking thing. Yeah. And put two Stevies or Splendos, what they have right there. You got lemonade right there, dude. Low calorie, free on top of it. <laughs> that just sweetens it. I'm not saying always do this, but these are good habits to practice. Yeah. There might be a time where I don't know if you're in a wine, you want to go have a little chicken parm or you know some little special yeah. dinner and you want to have wine okay that's fine but for the most part you want to create habits that's a, that's a dangerous habit to have dude the fucking soda yeah because when you're Luckily, at a little restaurant one, or bro. something they come and fill it up twice mm-hmm. three times if you're really thirsty and that's not to mention that's already economically that's you're talking 12 bucks right there Oh yeah, for three sure. Three sodas, that's twelve bucks. But most- not just that. You're talking you're talking thirty three grams minimum per cup of just pure thirty three grams of carbohydrates from sugars. Straight sugar. Is it syrup just- on top of that? <laughs> Fructose. Not even all that cane shit. sugar. Oh my God. That's that that's the crazy part, bro. It's like I don't think people and and, and, and I mean Mm-mm. and it's not a shit ton of calories, so to speak. Well, no, but the but, carbs. But it's, it's still sugar. an extra and still an extra three hundred calories minimum. That but yeah, you drink. But you don't want to drink your cal- your calories. Yeah, you know I mean that that you drink. Yeah. That's what it. That know. and then just the, just the sheer amount. You know that when you when you when you go overboard on the carbs and it comes from bread, depending upon what kind of bread or certain rices or, you know, whatever vegetables, whatever those carbs, you, you don't feel as bad. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams. Yeah. You don't feel as bad. Green beans, potato. <laughs> you don't feel as bad. No. But if you fucking have, if you're tracking them, because then all of a sudden people forget to track. If you have the first initial cup of soda and they refill it and then you, you know, the, 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 the conversation has been pretty baller all night to you and your wife. And, you know, you're hanging around and you don't want to leave because you have this weird image of you guys when you guys were younger and stuff and you're having a good time. So they fill it up once more without you asking because the girl wants a tip. You're going to drink it. Let's oh, not yeah. pretend like you're, you're not. going to be all into the conversation. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You remember? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. And then let's say the 33 grams of carbohydrates is very possible. You got 33, uh, 66. What is that? 99 carbs? Say 100. 100 carbs. Because the Coke is like 42. Oh, fuck. The can. So that's 120. Let's say yeah, let's 130. Say you, I think you're right on because you don't get, you get probably like 10 ounces of soda each time with all the ice they put in there. But yeah. let's say 100 grams like you're saying. Straight grams, sugars? And like 300 extra calories. And now you're you're feeling good because of the sugar. The endorphins are running. Yeah. You're looking at your chick's eyes. Everything's just going good. Da, 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 da. Let's split, let's split a, a, a chocolate mousse cake. You know what? I kind of wanted the cheesecake tonight. Da, da, da. Let's just get both then, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ends up happening, bro. Let's get the churro s'mores. And then she gets full and you're like, fuck yeah, I paid for this shit. Hell and yeah. You eat well, it. that's the job of a husband, bro. You, know? you fucking take over what they don't and want to eat. And then her baked potato, half of it's looking at you and you're like, fuck it. Oh, yeah, dude. Boom, boom, boom. Well, and then como, how the economy 2K is. 2K minimum that dinner. Oh, yeah. On calories. Mm-hmm. 2K you necked. And when you're in a deficit, <laughs> you don't even eat sometimes two grand. <laughs> Don't. Sometimes you just eat 1300, 1500. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. But I, that's my biggest advice. And people ask me because people ask me, you know, I was like, Oh my God, you've changed so much in such a little bit of time. What are you doing? I'm just like, Oh, I'm going to caloric deficit. Well, how do I do that? I'm just like, bro, like you have to eat. You'd be surprised how much adults and stuff still have that mindset that you, don't, you, you just don't eat. It's just diet. Move more and don't eat. It, I mean, social media has a lot to do with it too. Just. It's hard too, though, because then you get the say you find someone that's interested and you start tell me what things I can eat, da, 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 and then what do you like, and then you're like, I oh, just say that let's just start your breakfast off with four slices of bacon and bacon, and then you yeah. have to get into that they, conversation. They get freaked, yeah. Then it turns to a whole fucking subsidiary fucking conversation about fats versus carbs, and then it just makes everything so complicated, huh? Well, yeah. I can't do that because I break out. Da, 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 da. Uh, you break you out because change. you have you're too heavy. And your sebation glands are fucking overloaded. <laughs> That's why you're. Bur- it's fucked up, right? But so yeah. people, you, 
there's that certain subgroup of people that yeah unfortunately get like the acne well, i don't even know it's a subgroup anymore it's like the whole population like the, but there's like a certain group that like get really big and, and then they get really like acne you could tell it's from like that too. <laughs> you know what i mean though it's right? from eating chocolate and shit yeah but now nah, you know what's interesting bro is like i try to be on the heavier side of protein <laughs> you know i'm trying so hard not to laugh i try to be on the heavier side of proteins but i don't really give a fuck about fats Neither. I, I, I try not to go over. So I times and I don't I'm you know, man, I'm not a trainer. I'm not a trainer. I'm not a scientist. This is the way I do things. If you don't like it, this then fuck it is the way do, I live. You know, just yeah. You know, d- just fucking go with the Hodge twin shit. Do whatever the fuck you want to yeah. do. But I times point four times my body weight. And that's what I try to stay at at my fats. So I'm somewhere between 130 and 150. Yeah. Like grams per day. I try not to surpass surpass that, but I yeah, that's what yeah. I do. I don't even know if that's the right formula, but that's what I do. Yeah, and I think a lot of it like sounds cheesy and cliche. You're like, listen to your body, but li- literally, like not obviously like if your body to you, you say one day you eat a lot of fats, yeah, and you feel like shit, then maybe try the next day eating less fats and eating more carbs, and maybe you'll feel better. I'm not saying you are, I'm saying vice versa. Or be and what I do is I, I try to be mindful too though. Maybe maybe that doesn't help me too. Like say if I notice I started the day off with a lot of fats, yeah. Then, then okay, this day is gonna be lower on the carbs and yeah, more moderate on fats or whatever, and vice versa, you know. Like say one day I went out for breakfast with friends or something and I had toast and potatoes and shit. Okay, today's gonna be more balanced or more carb heavy. Yeah. Or like say like today, today I had I fasted to like twelve and I got home and I had two eggs. A low carb tortilla, but and eight seven slices of bacon. Yeah. So I was like, okay, today's gonna be higher fat. I'll just keep the carbs yeah. really low. So for dinner, we had my wife made like some short ribs, but I only had like two spoonfuls of rice. Because so I was like, okay, I was being mindful, you know. Yeah. It's like I'll fill up on the on the meat because I'm trying to be low carb since I've had a shit ton of fat. Yeah. Like for sure today I was over 100 grams of fat. That's normal. What do you try to stay at as far as like carbs for you is considered low? Considered low for me or high? What do you do as far as your carb intake when you're like, okay, when I'm low carb, I'm okay with this. So, uh, I'm kind of, I'm trying to figure out how to answer this question correctly. So what I consider low carbs for me, I guess that, so for me, it makes more sense that what I consider high carbs for me is anything above hundred. Yeah, me too. And most people will be like, what? Cause there's people that their normal day is 200 carbs easy and they'll be jacked easy. And they and they could have an office job, desk job, whatever. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. You have to figure out getting, steroids or no steroids. Getting where you fit in, natural or nat- natty or not. Though. Yeah, like I said, getting where you fit in. And for me, I fit in with either balanced, still slightly leaning towards lower carb. Though that works better for me. Yeah, I, I could I could definitely feel stronger if I get shit in the carbs. You know what's interesting, bro? I can never do high carbs. They fuck me up. And yeah. it's necessary when you're bulking. I know that they fuck me up too. I don't feel good. Yeah, me either. I feel like I'm congested, bro. Like, like I, like I, I can I, feel bl- my blood pressure go up. I watched like Sam Sulek, like like Sam Sulek when he was fucking bulking. This motherfucker was downing like 400. Of obviously he's on steroids, obviously, but still, bro, that's impressive. 400 to 500 grams of carbs a day, bro. I I think I would have gotten a heart attack. And from bad shit, he would eat them. Oh yeah, chocolate milk. Five fucking packets of oatmeal, From sugar, pretty much with with the fruit and cream. Yeah, bro. Because literally, me, I can literally feel my blood pressure go up when when I do high carb. Cream of wheat. He switched to cream of wheat recently, trying to be mm-hmm. more mindful. But ugh. and I could literally, I could tell you from at least for me. But I can see why like people are saying like, oh, Sam Sulik's a danger or whatever to the youth. Like my son loves Sam Sulik. He's funny too. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, he's it's relatable. Like, his, well, his maturity level is impressive for his age, but I always tell my son, I make it very clear. I explain to him, well, he's on steroids, Julian, so it's kind of difficult to get like that. Like, you can look something like that a little bit. You can see where you're going with that, but you might not get to that. You definitely cannot get to that. Divided by 10, huh? Yeah, and then he goes, what do you mean? You can't. I want to be as big as him. And I go, yeah, but the thing is, Julian, he's taking steroids. He goes, what's steroids? I was like, it's an injectable serum that you put inside of your bu- inside of your body that helps you recover faster. It helps you build more muscle. 
and it, and, and it makes you stronger, thus allowing you to be bigger. Oh, is that bad? Is it drugs? I was like, yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's drugs. So he's pumping drugs into his system. And he goes, isn't he supposed to be drunk? <laughs> I was like, no, it doesn't work like that. But yeah, no, I see what you're saying. But it's not that type of drug. It's yeah. it's not a stimulant. Still too young. Yeah, it's a different thing. But, but it is dangerous. Then he's going to die. I was like, well, he might. Who knows? But all in the, all in the in the pursuit of bodybuilding, you know. But I was like, but don't ever think that you're you're gonna get you, you that like don't ever look at that and think that's realistic because it's not. So I'm a, so I think influence is very important. Like this is bordering on a parenting conversation, but I think influence is very important in how a child thinks or how any person yeah. thinks. You know, there's people who set unrealistic goals for themselves, oh, and yeah. that often leads to failure in the gym as well. Because it's like, bro, you're not gonna get like that. Yeah, because natural bodybuilding, I think, is one one of the most disciplined, way one of the most disciplined sports you could do, bro. Well, that and then genetics play a huge role in it. Yep, because you could train day in day out just to fucking see the most minimal gain that took you two months. Yep. If you don't have the genetics for it, you're going to be very disappointed. Mm-hmm. If you're barrel chested, if you're box chested. You're gonna have a very, very, very. If you're, if you're not okay with it, there's people who are like, okay, this you have is white how, hips. Yeah, there's people who are like, this is how I look. I know this. Mm-hmm. I can't get a V taper. I know this. I know I'm gonna look long. I know this. And if you're okay with that, then then, then you'll be fine. But the fact of the matter is, I think everybody kind of doesn't. No. So it's really bad. But yeah, there's some people who are just. I've seen some guys that have some fucking wide old hips. Yeah. Like a lady, huh? They're all yeah. they're all wagged up. I'm like, bro. <laughs> all wagged the up. Fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked up, but I don't want you near But you know bro. what though, dude? Like, it, like it, those it, people are never gonna have the that illusion. Yeah. Well, it just depends too how you how, how you treat your body, dude. There's people that have really narrow shoulders. It's like, oh, fuck. Bro. What is that called? Like, is it you must feel bad for me? Like, damn, bro. No, there's a term for that. What's it called? They're good for fucking like cave crawling, I guess. <laughs> you know what's interesting is like for a while there, dude, I was like, yo, bro, like I'm just I, seriously, bro, this is how bad my body dysmorphia is. For a while there, bro, like my wife took a picture of me bending over, like fixing the sink and I was on my knees and my butt crack was hanging out and I had, I had slacks on and a black tank top, bro. Oh, my God. I was like, my hips and my fucking love handles were so huge. And my butt was so tiny. And my fucking back looked like all fat. It was so disgusting, dude. And she obviously took it fucking around, like, making fun of me. But, like, because my butt crack was hanging out. Yeah. But she, nah, she just took dude. it for the butt crack. Yeah. But then you were like, wait, no, let me dude. see that. Oh, no. oh my God, dude. I was questioning everything. I think anyone that lifts, whether you're big or not, has that problem too, though. Because like someone will take just a normal picture of you and then someone that lifts is like, send me that real quick. And then you're sitting there in bed, <laughs> zooming in here, zooming in there. Dude. You even grab the phone and look at it like this to see how it does. Dude, <laughs> the it's angle so off. bad, dude. I was like considering changing all my training technique. I was like, you know what, bro? I don't have a good body. I've never have. I'm not. I'm not gonna do this. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna fucking cardio up. I'm gonna just keep switching it up. I'm gonna get up in the mornings and run to the mission and back. And then some days I'm gonna cycle. Some days I'm gonna box. Some days I'm gonna stair climb. I'm just gonna keep switching up the cardio so my body don't know. And I'm gonna try to be in a caloric deficit. And I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get muscle anymore. Like that crazy. I've been in those. I've been. I've had that those thoughts too. Even recently, where I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna. Same thing. I was like, I'll sit. Yeah. I'll get up when Maria gets up. At I'll get up at fucking four fifty eight. You know, I'll get up slowly. I'll go on a jog from like four, from like five thirty to six. I'll come back, and, da, 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 and I'll hit some. Yeah. Bo- I'm gonna hit some box jumps, and I'm gonna fucking yeah. hit some burpees, and I'm gonna throw these bags around. Fuck it. I'm gonna need to lift. Yeah, I'm not like, gonna I'm lift I'm just gonna get down to like two hundred pounds, and then then I'll start lifting again. And, then and, at this and, way, and you know, there's a simple solution to it. There really is. If you allow your, if you allow your mind to get to that, bro, it goes to some dark places. Yeah. 
And and like when I did that, I calmed down and I looked at the picture and I was like, you know what, man? I know the answer to this question. I know what's going on here. I need to lose weight and build bigger lats. Mm -hmm. That's it. I they're there. They're there. I'm not I'm not fucking tiny. Like even not in the fat sense, but like in a muscular sense. Yeah. Dude, my lats are hella growing right now. Like crazy. Like I'm finally getting that V taper. I think that and I think that's always been a strong suit for us. Yeah. Like me too, bro. Sometimes I like I like doing polo. I just like doing a robot. I just feel like my back does not need to grow. I just like doing them, bro. I just I just feel like they, they have really good fucking like benefits, but I don't know the same thing though. For me it's the opposite with that, like fuck. Cause when I turn my back, my back just overpowers everything. When you're looking for back, I'm like, fuck. How come everything fucking else doesn't grow that way? You know? That's what I need that dude, and that's what I need to work on. I feel like my back is my weak point. I have a wide back, of course, but my love handles are bigger. Mm-hmm. For the first time in forever, just like that fucking Frozen song. For the first time in forever, I've noticed that, okay, finally, my back is a little bit wider than my love handles. I'm finally mm-hmm. getting a V taper. Finally. But because I haven't had a V taper since high school. That was the last time. And it's just because my love handles overpower it. And those are, those are fucking, those just take for, those just drop whenever they want to drop. Because you can't, you know, like, say you can't, as much as this trainer lies, you can't spot reduce that. No, no, no. It's going to go however it wants to go. Yeah. And some people it goes here, some it goes there. Yep. You know? Yep. Luckily, right now, I don't know, maybe just because that's the genetic thing, though. What's like, have you, ever seen, have you ever seen those guys that are built with a big lower half? Lower like, half? What going do you back mean? to like when they're like, I mean, they're still pretty fat up top, but they're not crazy fat. They're almost... And they're wagoned up. They have huge, like, leg and balls of fat, like, on their calves. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, in here, you mean? Yeah, yeah. and their upper body's, like, it's fat, but not proportional to, like, the bottom half, you know? Have you seen that? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The foods that wear the New Balances? Yeah, and you're like, what? The heck? They hold 60. It's, like, 70% of the weights from the waist down. It's like, how the fuck? The foods that waddle, huh? Yeah, see, that thing, that's worse, bro. That shit sucks, bro. That's, that's sad, sad, bro. But then you look at them and, like. But they, that might be medical conditions, though. Ah, I thought, like no. lymphedema and shit. I've seen kids they were in school, like they were just since they were young, they had that bill. It wasn't they as big bill. yet, but it's like what the they fuck? They have the cankles. You're like, yeah, it's like that's so weird. Yeah. Like, I've been lucky, bro. I never had that problem. I just always have like Me either, bro. It was a soccer and stuff. Thank God I never had that problem, even when I was bigger. Honestly, it's just a love handle thing for me. That's about it. That's the only problem I have. But Oh yeah. That and I have a huge fucking dome. That I just have a big I old head, dude. Fucking big too. Yeah. You know what I hate, dude? That if you want, another thing, dude. There's so many things, right? If I want to screw up, like, oh well, look at myself in the morning. You know, like sometimes have you ever like not eaten like past four p.m. and then you wake up, and you're like, wow, holy fuck, I look so fucking good. I look yeah, kind of yeah. like smaller and like and, lean. And after you and you took a big old piss, a big dump. Yeah, and then you look at yourself, and you're like, whoa, dude, my shoulders, my chest, holy crap, you look pretty good. I have a ring out here, bro, and, and I know it has a fisheye lens. I know. That it's a fisheye. It's different. You look yeah. different. Yeah. Bro. That should have do you dirty, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> I look at the back of my neck, dude. Oh, dude. It's all over, bro. <laughs> I'm like, dude, look at that shit, bro. I look like the hunchback of Notre Dame. This is crazy. The, ugh. I look like the fucking beast from Beauty and the Beast. This shit does not look good. But, yeah. Nah, it's, it's all right, bro. I just feel like, you know. Going on the things that have changed, um, I've always felt like we've known how to work out. Yeah. I've always felt that because everything that I see from from Dr. Mike from Renaissance, Sam Sulek, um, Davis Diley. You know who Davis Diley is? No, maybe if I see him. He's a savage, dude. You'll like his stuff. Davis Diley, um, Athlean. I don't really like him that much, but he's okay. Athlean X. Athlean X. Kind of annoying. Yeah, watch Athlean X. Doctor Michael Diamonds. Have yeah, you seen that guy. Yeah, uh, who else? Those are the guys that I watch. Chris Jones. I watch Chris Jones a lot. Those are the guys that I watch. And after, well, well Mike Rashid, Big Boy, S- Simeon Panda. 
The big boy's more powerlifting space. Yeah. Simeon Panda, uh, Mike Rashid. After old, old uh, Arnold stuff. Jesse James, or what's that guy's name? Jesse yeah. James West. Jesse James West. Watching all these guys, dude, we weren't far off with technique. We've no. never have been. No, we haven't. We haven't at all. Not even on rep or nothing. Mm-mm, nope. And then form. We've always been very good at the gym. Have you seen some people do shit in there? Bro, I'm, sometimes I can't tell if they're trolling or not. Well, well, sometimes you're bad just, it is. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, sometimes you're like, bro, you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. I saw a dude today. He's strong. But I'm just like, now, bro, now I'm thinking like an older person. Because I'm 31, bro. I First of all, you want to see me leg press 400 pounds? I'll do that. Like nothing. I'll, I'll leg press more than 400 pounds. I'll probably leg press somewhere close to 500, 600. I'll do that. But you will not catch me dead squatting more than two plates. No, nah, fuck that. Because it hurts my back and my knees, my left, my right knee in particular. I saw this dude, bro. And you should watch this dude on his eccentric. He's going down and he's like slamming down. And, and, he, and he's going deep. He's going really deep on the squats. And it's like, bro, how long are you going to last doing that? Seriously. Not very long. Let's be honest. How long are you going to last working out like that? Two years. And it's like, yeah, you're strong right now, but it's like you're in this for the long haul, bro. Like you're not going to get very far doing that shit. And it's really weird, right? It's really weird how that shit works. But I think right now the thing that has changed, there's not a day that I don't target a muscle group that I'm not sore the next day. That wouldn't happen back then. Obviously, I'm in a caloric deficit, so I'm going to feel it a little more, obviously. But even then, when I was bulking, and I know people are going to be like, why would you bulk if you're heavy? It's very different. You need to do it to build muscle and then shed it off and then see it better. Yeah. It's very it's very necessary. But, you know, some people are, don't know. But yeah, what if you... The touch now, because if some people say, "Well, I'll just recomp," you're gonna recomp a long fucking time. Oh yeah, you're gonna recomp at least. I'll say, or th- I think it's gonna take you two years of recomp when you could just bulk for six months. Exactly, and then cut for four, mm-hmm. and then bulk again, and that way you got two bulk. You got a total of uh, what is that? Eight months of bulking and four months of cutting in yep. one year. So, what I've noticed differently is that. I get the full stretch of my muscles and I slowed down. So I'm not pumping a lot of reps, but that's crazy though, because I am, it's weird, bro. But it's just, I've always been a 15 to 18 rep person. Well, I've always like twenties. Yeah. Somewhere around Unless there. I'm benching. If I'm benching, it'll be, the, the benching will just depend on what I'm trying to do that day. Yeah. So I guess I wouldn't throw benching in there. Yeah, but most people, what do they do? Sets of 10. Yeah. I've always been somewhere between 15 and 18, something like that. I've never done sets of 10 for... Me either. Unless, and the only time I'll get to 10, if it's a top, if I'm doing pyramids, and it's a top set. You yeah. You know, if like lat pull downs, if it's a top set, we're like, okay, the top set's going to be 10. You know, that's the only time we're like flies. See you, you, see you flies. Know, you know what my bro science was behind that? Is that if I custom myself to do 15 to 18... My working sets are going to be somewhere between 14 and 16. Yep. And my max hard reps, my championship reps, Eight to 12. are going to be somewhere between 7 to 13, 7 to 8 to 12, somewhere around there. It'll be close. In the same way. That was my bro science behind it. But now, <clears throat> I feel like... <coughs> <coughs> I feel like my lats are really getting big now. My chest is fucking, I was very scared. <coughs> God damn. I was really scared of having loose skin. I think the only loose skin I'm going to have so far from what I can see is in the stomach area, which is yeah. normal. That's going to happen regardless. Yeah. But the part I was worried about was my boobs, dude. No excess, no excess skin so far. That's good. And I don't think it's going to happen. Well, because you're going to fill it in too. I don't think it's going to happen. No, Either. Especially because you're filling it in. Because yeah. the way you're doing it a little slower, I think that that's that's also a lot better. Yeah, but I was concerned, dude, because I had man boobs. They got big, dude. They were flabby as fuck. 
I was like, yeah, dude, it, it looked like I was ready to milk a child. Yeah. And I was like, nah, bro, this is bad, bro. I'm like, this fucking sucks, dude. I'm going to get like, like, like they're going to sag. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's happening so far. But what I, th- what I think changed my thing is I try, I have a lot of like stretch marks right here. So I might have some there. That's fine. though. But I have those two right here. Yeah. Uh, hopefully as the bicep gets bigger, it'll go away yeah. or just look better. But what I've, what I feel has been helping me now is I really focus on the eccentric. Yeah, for you sure. Know? And I focus a lot on the eccentric, I feel like especially on chest movements. Yes, you. And then I, I'm, the same I'm way. very, very mindful of throwing my shoulders back to not engage the front delts. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yep. And so I never used to do that. So we still do. Yeah, we do train the same then. Yeah, I tried never. I never used to do that. I was mindful of it. But I wouldn't care. Yeah. Now I make it a point to make sure that my front delts are completely taken out of the activation. And then, for example, if I'm doing chest flies, I make sure that I almost make it like kind of ridiculous. I'll throw my fucking elbow, my, my, my shoulder blades back to make sure. And I'll arch my chest and I'll make sure that it's all chest related. The same way like you're hugging the tree. Yeah. It's all chest related. Now, check this out, bro. I feel this has been the game changer, and I feel like this has been the number one reason why I feel like my boobs are not, are are filling in rather than getting loose. Because that can happen. You can build muscle, but your skin will start getting loose if you're losing more weight than mm-hmm. adding muscle. Weight, and I mean weight consistently with fat and muscle. Yeah. I feel, okay, so on a pec deck. On a pec deck, you you usually sit, right? Okay, check this out. Give this a shot. I feel like it works. This is all bro science at this point, right? You sit on a pec deck. You grab both, right? Okay, that's normal. Sit at a 45-degree angle. Grab the pec deck. I mean, grab the right one and then grab it in there and then help it. And then you're going in and you're going so far that you're even... I can't even do it. I'm so sore. Yeah. But you're you're going over. Talking about. You're going over yeah. so the stretch gets in there and then you let it take it all the way back and you make sure that the farther back you go, the more you stick up your chest to make sure that you get the stretch and then same thing you go over and you don't stop right here at the midpoint. You yeah, <laughs> cross over. You cross over all the way to make sure that that's it gets those, the full stretch. Ca- that's why I always like those cable flies. Yeah. Because you could do them both at the same time and fucking cross. Cross. You feeling back, oh, fuck. Exactly. That shit. And I feel like that's been a game changer. For for my lats, you can do isometric workouts and just work one side if you want. Mm-hmm. But I feel that isometric, act. I feel like you get better activation as far as stretching the lat out. So what I do is... I, when I'm doing like, I do machines for these. Um, I, I'll do lat pull downs on plated machines as well, but there's like a machine where you can, it's like a lat pull down, but it has the, the straight strips. I'll grab it and I will come all the way, I will stretch it all the way down and then I will go up slowly on the eccentric, being very, very, very careful about because that's when the muscles under more tension mm-hmm. and then you let, you let it get the full stretch of the of the trap, and then you go down rather than pumping out reps. Yeah. And then you go up slowly, and you let that bitch stretch out until you feel it. You let it stretch out all the way, and then you go down. Yeah, you'll feel that shit underneath your yeah. pit, too. Yeah. And there's another one, too. Remember, we used to do that one a lot. It's sort of a like a like a lat pull down, but you're holding it like this. Yeah. And it's sort of the same thing. Like a reverse grip. Reverse grip. supinated, supinated exactly. So that one, you hold it closer to the end, to the beginning of the bar, mm-hmm. and that way, instead of a straight down motion, it's almost like a motion like this, that, where it's at an angle. There used to be a machine iron drummer that we released, and like that, it was plate loaded, and it was individual, yeah. and you could do them like that. It had a grip right there that you could pull each side individual, yeah, and it also had a thing that would come across the top that you could pull individual, and you could yeah. switch the grips or whatever. Yep. And you could also, if you got clever, which I used to do, is you could grab the actual square stock, metal stock, not the grip at all, and grab it from here and pull like this. That way you would hit your inside lat and your fucking forearm. Yeah. And the only reason I learned that was because I'll see like the fucking 
so to speak, greats, dude. You know, like f- fools that were in there, they're like old Iron Jungle people that were like competing, and I'd kind of observe them on shit they would do, and be like, oh shit. To make sure the blue sign is facing you, you can turn the the mic. There you go. Okay. Yeah. No, but yeah. So instead of doing a straight down like this, you grab it towards the end. Because if you notice, you can even do this on your own as a stretch. If you go like this and try to stretch all the way straight up in a supinated grip, you're a lot. You can feel the stretch. But have you ever done this with an angle? It stretches a lot more. So your movement when you're going down, it stretches and you're still. But people will stop here and then go down. And they'll stop here and they'll go down. They're they're not getting a full range of motion. Yeah, they're doing hypertrophy. Or, or partials. Yeah, and they're doing hypertrophy. And, and you're not, I feel like you don't get a lot out of partials unless you're on sauce. Yeah, well, yeah. And then, but the thing is, is like, you don't have to go super slow like I'm like I'm showing you. But, you know, you want to make sure you get the full stretch and you feel it. Yeah. And then I do do what Sam Sulik does, and I feel like it's been a huge change too, is when I'm done and I can't go no more, I'll use my right hand. Uh, to help me get another four, like a self assistance. Yeah. If you don't have a spotter, same no, thing sense. with the lo- same thing with the right, same thing with the left. You use that hand. I do that on my curls now too. Like when I'm fucking, I try to get the full extension as well, and then focus on the way down to be more controlled. Get those and extra then reps. when I'm at like 15, I'm like fuck, I can't anymore. I'll do as much as I can, and then I'll help. I'll use my own self assistance and do like another like six self assistance. What's your other arm, yeah? Oh, dude, you're so fucking baked. You're cooked, huh? Yeah, like crazy. But I don't know. I feel like we were never off with form, but no. just those little tweaks have made such a big I difference. I think that's why I think that's why pull-ups are so great for back, bro, because I feel like if you can do pull-ups, like you don't really have to do much. No, nah, Or, or you have to do is switch the pull-up. Yeah, this way, that grip. way, grip, uh, narrower, wider, supinated, unsupinated. Because you go all the way to the bottom, you go all the way to the top. It's a long ass range of motion. Yeah, because you get the full extension of the lats. Mm-hmm. That's my goal, man. Believe it or not, people can clown me as much as they want, whatever. I can't do pull ups, dude. Maybe shout out to your goal. That'd be a cool goal. That's going to be my goal. Yeah, to do at least three. Yeah. Because I can laugh. Because you, pu- you can do push ups just fine. I've seen you. Oh, yeah. Like I nothing. Do. I can bust out push ups like they're fucking great, like they're, like they're Skittles. Pull ups. Once you get the first three down, it's gonna be easy. I can I can jump off of a couch and do fifty push ups, not like nothing. Yeah, like nothing. But push pull ups, I can't. But I think once you get a little lighter, it's gonna help too, though. But uh, you've probably heard a lot of people say like when they can't do pull ups, but once they get one down, yeah, from there on out, it's just you make a lot of progress quickly. But like I'm the, a I'm a strange cat when it comes to the gym, bro. This does shit doesn't add up. Like, remember when you were like, how much do you do, like, dumbbell? And I told you, you were like, bro, you should be benching so much. And I can't. Yeah. I just can't. And the, th- the thing is, too, like, lat pull downs, I can do close to, like, 295 in lat pull downs. So, you have pretty much your weight. Yeah. But I can't do pull-ups. And I feel like I'm the opposite. I feel like I can I can do a pretty good amount on lat pull downs, but I feel like my pull-up game is stronger than my lat pull down game. Which is better, technically, if you want to grow. Yeah. Your lats in particular, I think. That's why I just try. To, I, I try to keep it underhand, so I can just try to target my foot, my arms more than my back. Well, who knows? You you think so? You'll probably get more bigger with lat pull downs, but you'll get more lean. You'll get more activation, and as know. far as the whole lat goes, if you do pull ups, some people say you get bigger with the pull ups, and some people say vice versa. Because I know, oh, do they? I know Arnold was a huge advocate for but, what. For pull-ups. For pull-ups. That was, he said he couldn't get a complete back without it. But then again, look what he would do. He fucking would add 90 pounds of weight to his. Oh, remember? you know what? He you would know do, what he would do weighted pull-ups. You know what, too, dude? I forgot to mention. Huge thing. I got a landmine for my barbell in my garage. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do bent over. They're not T-bar rows because I use the, the, the close grip attachment. Yeah. And I use this fucking ghetto, but it works. And then I use my my, plast, my plastic uh, ramps for oil changes. Uh-huh. I stand on top of that. And then I use the landmine grip. Smart. Yeah. And I use the landmine grip. I'll do hack squats on there. But I'll also do bent over T-bar rows. Yeah. A lot of people love those. Dude. You know, Arnold was huge for those too, huh? Huge I, advocate. I feel like I feel like standing on the on the ramps 
really gets me, allows me to stretch my lat. Gives you that extra depth, huh? Yeah. Well, it allows me to stretch it. And I feel like that's why my lats have been changing. But uh, my, my goal is to really grow my lats this year. I've even actually taken a, taken a break off of my shoulders, which I shouldn't do because, like, dude, I haven't worked on my shoulders, like, in a month. I love working on shoulders. Well, because – and I shouldn't because Dr. Mike, like, what's his last name? It's Isretel. Isretel, yeah, Dr. Mike Isretel. He's a guy from Renaissance. But he says, you want to grow you, – you want to look absolutely grotesque. And you want people to say, God, that guy's fucking jacked. You absolutely have to work shoulders. Shoulders is is that one thing where you go, hey, that guy's pretty big. That guy's fucking jacked. You want to work the shoulders. You want to make sure that the shoulders, as far as the deltoids and everything, look – you're going to look pretty jacked. Yeah. He says the shoulders, you do that. But I've always felt like my shoulders are pretty big. Yeah. And like – That's what I worked on the most is the last time when I got back into it. And I think it, it showed a lot too. Uh, excuse me. Sh- I- shoulders are a lot too though because shoulders like – when you work out shoulders, hard to fucking bitch the next day. Yeah. It's a fucking nightmare if you work them out correctly. Like the soreness. Oh. Yeah. You don't feel right, huh? No. You just feel like you want to stand like this. Actually fu- scratch that. It might not have been a month. It might be like two weeks. But You just want to sit there with like your arms crossed on when your shoulders hurt. You just like all day you just want to be like this. For for shoulders, all I've ever done, dude, is straight up is like is uh, shoulder shrugs for the traps to get big, big traps. Uh-huh. And then I'll work the whole circumference of the of the deltoid. You know, so I'll do lateral raises. That's all I, that's all I do is raises. I'll do lateral raises. I'll do I'll do front raises. I do, I do front and lateral. I'll do front and lateral and then I'll switch to the pec deck and then do for yeah. the back. Yeah, behind behind the back. Yeah. To get the whole like shoulder. Like a reverse uh fly pretty much. Well that way you get we'll that, point it up. That way you get that three D look. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to just that's another thing that the pull-ups help with, too, though. Yeah. That shoulder rotation. Yeah. Yeah, but, dude. But then push-ups do, too, though. Push-ups, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a huge striation now in my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And it goes right. It splits right by the deltoid. It splits right down the middle. That's sick. huge. But I've had it before. You remember that picture that we took in the green bathroom at Shannon? Mm-hmm. I oh, have yeah, that yeah. picture. I had that already. I have that picture. Yeah, it's an old pic. Yeah, I had that already, but it's really prominent now. It's like deep, and it's weird because it splits my shoulder. That's good. It's really weird, yeah. So now I just need to match my forearms and my biceps to it because my triceps are ahead of the game, but my biceps are pretty tiny, I think. So I just really need to get that done. And then my goal really is this year is just really, really emphasize my back to mm. kind of take away from the love handle look. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to get back in there and focus on it again. Yeah. So probably September 3rd, and I'm going to go pretty hard for the next eight weeks. I just wanted to get down to like the 20s, 220s, and then like and just do a like a, like a recomp slash maybe – Slow, I'll just, I don't even know what to oh. call it, but just like a 2,800 calories for like four months. Yeah. Or longer. We'll see. All right, man. I think we did pretty good. We just kind of went off the rails a little bit because we haven't done this in a while. So this was fun. We were really relaxed and yeah. comfortable. But um, okay. That's good for this one. And then before we we'll, go, though, before we go, though, Drake has pulled it off, bro. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also happy. It was a good fight. Also happy for him. It was a good fight. I I, I don't know. DDP is kind of like a... I was happy for him. I, and I didn't even... Ex- I didn't expect it. Yeah. But I didn't think he would get mopped or anything. I just... Yeah. I thought Izzy was going to do some... I don't know. I didn't know what I thought. But I thought Izzy was somehow was going to win. I knew... Um, I, he was... I, I, think, I think he was doing good. Yeah. Izzy was doing good. That was a good fight. I he didn't throw as much leg kicks as usual, which is a huge factor into Izzy's game. I thought it was 3-1. Had that gotten all those four rounds, what do you think? It would have been three one, huh? You could make a case for two to two, but you say three one for Izzy? No, for Drakus. Oh no, 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 no! I uh, no, no, no! I had a two so? two. No, no, not at all. I had Drakus first two rounds, Izzy third, and I thought Mm-mm, I had Izzy the first round. You did? Mm-hmm. I had not Drakus. Yeah, but you know. Fighting, fighting, and shit is 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 in the 
It's like fighting, watching fighting and scoring fighting is like is like is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Because I have seen fights where I've seen one person dominate and somebody else thinks that the other person did. Yeah. Fighting's very particular, dude. It's it's such a it's such a gray area. That's like the to the point that I learned late in life not to argue with people about it. And even though I've said on this podcast, like, come on, I'll debate you and shit, sometimes I gotta remind myself, like, bro, like fighting and shit is in the beauty it, it, it's like it's like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder because yeah. certain people see different things. Yeah, because that's how that going back to that Pitbull Cruise fight, his last one, that's how that one was. A lot of people thought Rayo fucking smoked him Dude, from start to finish, and I don't think so. The X, the X, they did a little pull on X, and it was like 60%, 60-something percent said that Rayo won. Yeah. No, I think he won. I think he won, too. But 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 I, very marginally. I thought it was like a 7-5. I thought it was 7-5 or tie. That To yeah. me, that would have been fair. Yeah. 7-5 or tie. Yeah. But I didn't see, I guess we're going back on that, but I didn't see people do a lot, a lot enough to also be like, yeah, I won by far how he said he did. Yeah. That didn't happen. There's fights that I think people get entirely wrong. There's people. But th- they will br- uh, bring yeah. up their arguments as to why they got that. And I'm just like, wow, okay. The thing is that that, that, that like other 35% that says that people won on that fight, they think he won like 9-3. to three. No, no. I'm not. Like there was another poll saying like Mm-mm. that. It was like 9 3 8, 4. I'm like, no, dude, that's. I like Pitbull and everything. I want him to win, but no, no, that it was not the case. No, not at all. It's like the fucking fight with Adelaide Bird. She saw Even, Canelo in the first fight with Golovkin. She saw, she had him one eighteen to one oh some shit crazy shit. Yeah, that never happened. I like I like a lot of people hate Jim Lampley for some strange reason, but I love after the fight when they were talking about it. He goes, well. We have a we have a draw between Canelo and Triple G. One of the scorecards of Adelaide Bird was one eighteen to one ten. That is fiction. That did not happen. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's like there was a recent fight where that happened too, though. I bro, remember you saw the trouncing that Floyd Mayweather put on Canelo? Yeah, somebody had it a tie. No, bro, that person filled out their card. Before. We all wanted Canelo to win that, but bro, you had to you had to keep it real. That was that was a trouncing. There's people thinking he didn't lose a bit all. Oh, God. See what I mean? It's like beauty in the eye of the beholder. It's but the same thing with fighting, bro. They see it different, but they think they know. And you can't really fault them for that. But when it's a blatant, though, then it is worth an argument. Nah. <laughs> that will never mm-hmm. be the whole. No, nah, not with fight. Not with fighting. It's just it's too personal, bro. Yeah. Because then people will think you're fucking a, then they'll attacking bring the, then they'll them. Bring, or their country. That and then they think you're attacking them. Would you don't think I can't fight, motherfuckers? Like, okay, okay, whatever. You fucking little man syndrome. We're watching a fight, but 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 the interesting thing is like, it's like when you see somebody with a busted ass female. That's why I say beauty's in the eye of the beholder. That's so true. is fighting and watching fights because you'll see somebody with a busted ass fucking chick. You know, she looks like she can fucking play lineman, and some dude who might be skinny. Fucking thinks she's, she's she's madly in love with her. Everything yeah. you might see her busted up as fuck, but he don't. That's true. You might see a chick that's like fucking got no ass, no tits. She's got teeth like a gator on a haunted house. But this motherfucker finds her fucking irresistible. It's the same thing with fighting, bro. You'll watch something completely different, and this dude's over here telling you, "I don't know what you were watching." And you're like, what? Whoa, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. But that's just it, man. That's just how it is. You know? That's that's why you have so much different. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes this shit lucrative. There's so mm-hmm. many discussions that can be had and decisions that can be and, and and decisions that can be had and a lot of conversations to be had. Had. <laughs> but anyway. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, and then... We got Canelo coming up pretty soon. We got Canelo coming up pretty soon. So, a couple weeks that we do the podcast, now we're doing it once every two to three weeks. So, that'll be perfect timing. And then we also have the UFC, Noche UFC. So, we got some good shit coming up. But, that's it, man. fights coming up for sure. That's all I got. And then we'll see what Strickland has to say about it, if he gets the shot again, or... Nah, he's going to get it. He's going to get it? Yep. It's going to be a good fight. That, it's criminal if you don't. It's another one we could argue on too. 
Yeah. Oh, he beat DDP. You know what I mean? See? see? But there's people who think he don't. And there's people who say that DDP fucking full on mopped him. That it should have been like 4-1. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. But, you know. Dana White said, I had a 3-2 for Strickland. I had it the same. I had a 3-2 Strickland or tie. Yeah. You got to factor in the takedowns, even though he didn't do much with them, but that's the t- another conversation we t- had. Take, yeah, the takedowns that lasted three seconds. He didn't do much with them, but He'd they take count. take him down and Strickland would be right up with him literally five seconds at most. There was yeah. one where he held him down a little bit. But they count. So that's the thing. Yeah. But you're never going to end with people who think they're right, you know? But anyways, now for real, we're done. That's it. All right. Cut.